Good morning, Crossing Church. Will you stand to your feet and praise the Lord with us this morning? Come on, let's sing it out. There's a fountain I know where blessings overflow, where living water runs free from the mercy seat. There's a joy I know deep inside my bones, a never-ending well where I thirst no more. Rejoice, rejoice, my soul. Come on, rejoice, rejoice, my soul. Come on, sing it out. And praise the Lord, because Jesus came for me. He sent me on my feet, and now I'm singing. And praise the Lord, by the power of his name. I'm free and I'm in a shame, so I keep singing. There's a love I know, wash me white as snow, healed this broken heart, and he made me whole. There's no power in hell that could separate, I'm forever held by his amazing grace. Rejoice, rejoice my soul, come on rejoice, rejoice my soul, and praise the Lord. upon a tree gave his life that day on calvary the grave couldn't hold him and it can't hold me i'm alive in christ i'm alive in christ he's alive in me so praise the lord because jesus came for me he sent me on my feet and now i'm singing and praise the Lord by the power of his name. I'm free and I'm in a shame, so I keep singing. And praise the Lord, cause Jesus came for me. He set me on my feet and now I'm singing. And praise the Lord by the power of his name. I'm free and I'm in a shame, so I keep singing. Jesus, we praise you this morning, God. Holy, holy is the name. Mighty is the name. How powerful is the name. Jesus, we welcome your presence in this place, your holy presence. Fill our hearts, fill our minds with you. Church, sing this out. A thousand generations. A thousand generations. Falling down in worship to sing the song of ages to the Lamb. And all who gone before us, and all who will believe, will sing the song of ages to the Lamb. Your name. Your name is the highest. Your name is the greatest. Yeah. 
on, there's just something about that name, Jesus. Jesus, we worship your holy name. Be welcomed into this place on our praises this morning.
Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Come on. Now, I was just praying as we're here in service. I just felt here in my spirit. I just want to encourage everyone in this room just come into the light. Come into the light. And if you feel uncomfortable, just want you to know that this is the light that heals and restores. This is the light that brings hope, that shows the way in darkness. And it's, because the Bible says, like, those who hate the light because you love darkness. But I, I'm, I'm speaking the truth now is that this light is exactly what you need. Push back the discomfort and come into the presence of the Lord. Because this is where you find what your soul needs. It's the light. There's no condemnation for those who are in Christ. And the Lord, the word says, come boldly, means without fear, into the throne of grace where you'll find help and mercy in time of need. You will not find the rejection of God when you seek him. But come into the light. Come back to the light. I feel that's a word for some of you. Come back into light. So God, I pray right now, we ask for your presence to move, to move mightily, your spirit, Lord. I pray you do what we cannot see, hope, or imagine. God, I pray you move powerfully in every heart in this room. God, I thank you. Let your presence be made known in this room. God, I pray for healing and restoration right now in the name of Jesus for everyone in this room. I pray that right now for your presence, that people will experience your love, experience your truth, your peace, Lord. So God, I ask you to have your way to whatever it is that you want to do right now, God. And I just pray for the people who are just fighting this tension they're experiencing. I just, I'm going to say to you, do not resist the presence of the Holy Spirit. Because in it you'll find hope. You'll find a rest for your soul. So God, I pray for your rest to be released right now in Jesus' name. God, now God I pray you help us fix our eyes on you. Fix our eyes on you, Lord. To the Lord, pray right now. Move however you want to move. In, in Jesus' name we pray. And we all say, amen. Come on, come on. Hey, guys. Happy Sunday. Look, I just want to welcome you here to the crossing. If you're here for the first time, on behalf of Pastor Randy and Pastor Stacy. Just welcome to this amazing church community. My name is Pastor York. I am the student and the young adult pastor here at this church. Um, man, I love, I love this place. And I hope you do too. Yeah. So before we get to the video announcements, as we get on with the service, if you're an introvert, I'm going to challenge you. <laughs> like me. Just make a round. Just go say hi to at least three people. Introduce yourself. 
love on somebody and make this place awesome. And once we're done, video announcements. We'll see you in a little bit. Welcome to The Crossing. We're so glad you're here. I'm Christine, and here are your video announcements. Our vision at The Crossing is to restore every person to God and the life He created them to live. We want to ensure every person is connected to a life-giving, biblical community. If you're a first time guest or you've been coming for a while, we would love to connect with you. Check out the connect card in the seat back pocket in front of you. Fill out this card and drop it off at the connect desk in the lobby after service. If you're joining us online, you can fill out the same card at thecrossing.cc slash connect and we'll reach out to help you find the best community for you here at The Crossing. We invite you and your family to gather with us on December 24th at 9 and 11 a.m. to worship and adore Him at our Christmas candle lighting service. We'll enjoy Christmas carols, worship, and a message from Pastor Randy. This will be a wonderful time of celebrating for all ages. Ladies, our annual ornament exchange is coming up on December 10th. This is the biggest party of the year, and we can't wait for you to enjoy dinner with live music, shop our local vendors, and win great raffle prizes. Bring your friends, your family, and a wrap ornament to exchange, and join us at the Woodlands Waterway Marriott from 6 to 8.30 p.m. Tickets are available for purchase right now. So for more information, head to thecrossing.cc slash women or the help desk located under the breezeway after today's service to save your seats. To stay up to date on everything that's going on at The Crossing, you can like us on Facebook, follow us on Instagram, or download our Church Center app. Well, that's all I have for your announcements. So grab your Bible, your coffee, and your notes, and let's lean in and prepare our hearts for today's message. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So you walked in and there was a handout on your seat and you said, must be Pastor Reggie. <laughs> Must be Pastor Reggie. And it is indeed. It is indeed. The first thing I want to do is, again, um, Pastor Randy is taking a rest as he prepares for Christmas. Can we all, he's watching, can we all just let him know how much we love him? Come on, let him know. Yeah. <laughs> Woohoo! Yes. Yes. And the second thing I want to do before I get started is, I want to let you in on a little secret. Today is my wife's birthday. And I am more in love with you than I have ever been. Ever. 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 Anyways, I'm a blessed man. I'm a blessed man. Hallelujah. So how many of you ate yourself into a coma on Thursday? So I've decided that my new business endeavor is I want to see if I can figure out a way to concentrate that tryptophan, that chemical in turkeys, because I think it works every time. There's lots of drugs that don't work every time. Turkey works every time, every time. So I trust that you had a wonderful, 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 wonderful Thanksgiving. And uh, of course, you know we're in a series called Fit. The quest for community. But before we get to that, uh, Preachers 101 says you need to start with a joke. <laughs> so here it is. Who were to go? Oh, there it is. Okay. Four men find themselves in an airplane that has lost all power and is going to crash. The problem, there are only three parachutes. 
four men, three parachutes. The first guy says, I'm the world's best heart surgeon and the world needs me. So he takes a parachute and jumps out. The second guy says he's the world's foremost scientist and might be the smartest man in the world. So he yells, I should get a parachute, snatches one and jumps out. The final two guys are an 80 year old pastor and a 13 year old boy scout. The pastor says to the 13 year old, I've lived an incredible life. I know where I'm going when I die. You take the last parachute. The 13 year old says, why? There's still, still two parachutes left. The pastor responds, how? Because when he saw that there were only three, he started praying in hope that God would do a miracle. You know, one parachute becoming two. Well, the Boy Scout shouts back, you know the smartest guy in the world? He just jumped out with my backpack. <laughs> he is not doing well. He is not doing well. So the name of our current series is called Fit the Quest for Community. And the name of today's message is Let's Be Community. Said another way, am I willing to do my part to make community, as God describes it, a reality and to see it expanded? As we examine our part, I want to remind everybody that your soul is comprised of three parts, our will, our thoughts, and intellect, and our emotions. Our will is where decisions get made and follow through happens. Let's call those decisions and follow through the obey part. How decisions get made is of crucial importance. As a Christ follower, they get made by learning and aligning ourselves with what God has said and what he thinks. Let's call that the hear and believe part. And it's not that we shouldn't acknowledge our emotions, but they can be pretty fickle. And while they can be good servants, they're terrible masters. So I know that none of you have ever let your emotions get away from you, right? I'm the only one. We have a story in our family that I'm not going to tell because she would be embarrassed. But my emotions got away from me. Let's say it this way. It's, God's, it's just God's grace that our daughter is alive and that our son is alive, actually. Because I was going to kill them both. <laughs> not at the same time. They, they, had, they had their own thing. So, as Isaiah 55, 8 and 11 says, For my thoughts are not your thoughts, neither are your ways my ways, says the Lord. For as the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways, and my thoughts higher than your thoughts. And let's all recognize that there can be a lot of wrestling and back and forth while we are in the hear, believe, and obey cycle. That's certainly been true in my life. So everyone has permission to wrestle. We hear, we believe, we wrestle. Then we obey, we wrestle, we follow through. It's normal, it's just part of life's tension. So y'all, if you've been here before, you know I like participation. So did y'all come loose? You ready to participate? Okay, y'all making me nervous. <laughs> I need participation, okay. So a couple of questions. By a show of hands, how many of us want stronger biblical communities? Show of hands. Is that something you want? All right. How many of us think that we, you and me, has something to do with making that happen? Show of hands. Okay. So I, I, I know I didn't see every hand, but I saw most hands. So I want to share a scripture to set all this up. It's Romans 12, 2. And all these uh, scriptures today are going to come from the Passion Translation. It's a, it's a devotional Bible that I use, and so it's not a word-for-word -word, um, translation. It's a thought-for-thought. Thought. So it's a little bit different than like the King James, New King James, and I be that kind of thing. So this is what it says. Joy, would you put that first one up? It says, stop imitating the ideals and opinions of the culture around you. So let me, comma. How many of us agree that our world would be better if we would stop imitating the ideals and the opinions in our culture today? How many agree with that? Is that a big amen? Okay. 
but be <laughs> right. Yeah, okay, all right. Okay. We got a believer over here. All right. Okay. But be inwardly transformed by the Holy Spirit through a total reformation of how you think. So the word total means total. <laughs> so if part of your mind is renewed and the rest of your mind is not, that's called double-mindedness. And the Bible says that a double-minded person, this is in James, a double-minded person is unstable in all of their ways, all of their ways. So we need a total reformation of how we think. So this will empower you to discern God's will as you live a beautiful life, satisfying and perfect in his eyes. Remember, God's idea of perfect is being conformed to the image of his son. It's not what our culture says. Perfection is being conformed to the image of Jesus. And if we will allow the Holy Spirit to transform our thinking, then we can be on our way. So let's stop imitating the ideals and opinions of the culture around us. Do we have an agreement with that? All right. So I wanted to briefly review some highlights from Pastor Randy's earlier messages in this series as they provide wonderful context for today's discussion. He said he often thought of community in terms of family. So I'd like to suggest that today's message will work in that context only if family is how you think about community. Community, family, the body of Christ. It, whatever your frame is, it'll work in that frame. So two weeks ago, Pastor Randy dug into the importance and purpose of community. He called it community on purpose. Please go back and look at that. In essence, we were created by God for community and we long to be long. God put that in us. As a matter of fact, the first example he used was Adam. Now, fellas, I don't know about you, but when Debbie came into my life, I said, whoa, God. We're not supposed to be alone. So it's in the context of marriage. It's in the context of family. It's in the context of community. We need each other. Okay, so go back and look at that. Last week, Pastor Randy talked about the, defeating the number one enemy of community. We looked at the impact of how being offended can distort our perspective about, about what's really happening. He highlighted the incredible danger of not taking the plank out of our own eye before we go to inspect or tell our neighbor that they need to remove the speck from their eye. It provided a terrific opportunity for self-reflection and looking at your own issues before you go to help someone else look at their issues. So go back and look at that one also. Now I've heard it said, oh, let me ask this other question. How many of you in this room have issues? <laughs> Show of hands. Okay. So in, in my family, my daughter, my princess, I call her princess, even though she's years old. <laughs> she grabs my hands and she says, Daddy, you have issues. Should I believe her? She says yes. She says yes. So clearly, everybody in this room has acknowledged that they have issues. Okay. Because here's something. If you don't think you have an issue, perhaps that's your issue. <laughs> perhaps that's your issue. <laughs> the Bible warns that self-deception is really bad. John talks about it in 1 John 1, 8, where he says, if we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves and the truth is not in us. If we say we have no issues, the truth is not in us. We deceive ourselves. My dad told me that the worst kind of deception is self-deception. It's self-deception when you're deceiving yourself. People need healing and encouragement during the process of sanctification. That's learning to be more Christ-like. Born again occurs in a moment, but experiencing freedom and Christ-likeness is a journey, a process, a quest, 
And there's that word from our title of the series, A Quest for Community. Life change usually happens in the context of three relationships, us to God, us to ourselves, and us to others. You can develop talent in private, but in order to develop character, you must be in relationships, and character is important to God. So how many of you know people who have incredible talent but no character? As a matter of fact, our jails are full of people who have talent. They don't have character. Our families are full of people who have talent, but because they don't have character, their families struggle. Our communities are full of people that have talent, but they don't have character, and therefore our communities struggle. So today, we're going to look at what biblical community looks like and what's our crest quest, what's our part in making that happen. So let's take the word fit from this month's title series. Again, it's fit, the quest for community. Let's turn it into an acrostic and make it a solution, okay? So the F is focusing. Am I focusing on doing my part in helping my community be biblically healthier? Now, when I thought about this, I thought, huh, uh, I wonder if I should say this because, Reggie, you have a problem, problem with focusing. And uh, so what are the things that actually impact my focus? Well, one of the things is I'm pretty busy. Anybody in, in here busy? What about the speed of life? Now, I love this thing. When I get to talk to my wife, when I get to text my family and some of y'all, all that. But I tell you, technology is a wonderful servant. It's a terrible master. And some of us have been mastered by this. And as a result, we've lost our ability to focus on people. One of the things that we know about Jesus is that he noticed people. I mean... The woman with the issue of blood, you're in, a, you're in a crowd of hundreds of people and somebody bumps you and you notice, he was focused. He was focused. He noticed people. So another biggie lack of focus area for me is procrastination. Honey, don't say anything. <laughs> a hearty amen. I convince myself that I can do it later. I rationalize my poor behavior. Now, have you ever looked at the word rationalize? Rational lie. <laughs> and we get good at rationalizing our poor behavior because we're operating in deception. It's not, tr it's not the truth. It's not the truth. So the only other one that really gets me is Sometimes I'm just so wrapped up in my own life. It's called self-centeredness, which is a twin brother to pride. And it may look or feel to others like I don't care. So am I focusing on doing my part? So is everybody clear that focusing is important if we're going to build community? Everybody agree? All right. The I is investing. Am I being intentional about investing my time and energy? Do I actually set aside time to create an enhanced community and let people know I'm interested in them in, and their life? Is it, on your, is it on your calendar? Do you set aside time? Do you plan time to actually invest in people? Yes? Good. So am I investing? The T is for trusting. Am I trusting that as I practice loving others the way Jesus loves me, that he, Jesus, will cause some of the seeds that he has given me to sow to take root, grow, and flourish. Now, the reason trusting is important is because we live in America, and in America, things need to happen like this. Sometimes to actually build community, to see people connect, it takes time and it takes effort. 
And the thing that we need to trust in is God. In 1 Corinthians 3, 6, this is Paul talking about people were trying to create, take credit for the good things that were going on in the local community. And this is what Paul said in 1 Corinthians 3, 6. I, Paul, planted, Apollos watered, but it was God that gave the increase. And so I'm trusting, and are you trusting, that he will bless your efforts with success? Will I resist the temptation to give up if I don't see immediate results? So let me ask you this. How many times have you asked someone to do something or reached out to them and it didn't take? In fact, it may have felt like you were being ignored. And that, does that ever happen to anybody? Okay. Or you invite someone over and they say no, or they just don't show up. Does that ever happen to anybody? Or it's a lot of ors. It's a lot of ors. Because if we're trusting things to happen on our time frame, that means we're not trusting in God. Faith in God means faith in his timing. Faith in God means faith in his timing. Okay? So, we are all secretly or openly wanting a community to fit in. Fit in. God put that in us. I'd like to talk about being a community where others can fit in. How do we develop and grow a more biblical, healthy set of relationships with people? How do we actually build and expand community where each of us has a part to play? I'd like to describe some values of community or family, and it's all about how we one another each other. So as we go through these, I'd like you to listen for yourself to see if there's a value or two that you would like to get a little better at. Now, it's important that you're listening for yourself because you're probably sitting next to someone that you know well, and you're going to hear one of these values and you're going to go, you don't do that at all. <laughs> the purpose of this is not to get your spouse or your child or your whatever, your brother, your sister, in trouble. It's to ask the Holy Spirit, help me get better at this so that I can take part in building biblical community. So, I get asked what Bible study method I use. It's called OIA. The O means observation. What did the scripture say? The I means interpretation. What does it mean? And the A means application. Now, how am I going to change in response to what the scripture means? Now, just about everyone in the room from the students, any great grandparents in here? Okay, we got, oh, we got a great, oh, that's right, Mimi, right, Mimi? Yeah, I just met her today. <laughs> She's fantastic. Um, everybody in the room, whether you're a student or a Mimi, can take part in this. Everybody can take part in this. So let's all keep in mind that perhaps, as Pastor Randy shared last Sunday, there might be a plank in our eye that hinders us in an area, and the Holy Spirit may want to work on something. So I'd like you to just be open to that, okay? There are almost 55 one another scriptures in the Bible, literally one for every week of the year, or seven for every week, every day of the week. God was and still is very concerned about the one another relational dynamic in his creation. The creation, that's you and me. It's in our community. It's in our families, right? He's very concerned about that. So let's look at some ways that we can focus and intentionally invest the first two letters of fit. And here are some things that you see and hear going on in a biblical community. Number one, I will love and accept others. 1 John 4, verses 7 and verses 11, those who are loved by God, let love continually pour from you to one another because God is love. So listen to that. Are you loved by God? 
then let his love continually pour from you to one another. We, we, you know, if you've ever been to the Middle East, there's a big difference between the Dead Sea and the Sea of Galilee. The Dead Sea, there's no way to get out. And in fact, they call it the Dead Sea because everything in it is dead. In the Sea of Galilee, it has an entrance and it has an exit. And so if God's love is in us, he's put it in us, let's let it exit out. And scripture tells us it should continually pour from us. Everyone loves, everyone who loves is fathered by God and experiences an intimate knowledge of him. Verse 11, delightfully loved ones. If he loved us with such tremendous love, then loving one another should be our way of life, not an exception. Let me ask you the question. How many people, okay, so I'm probably not going to see many hands on this one. So I'm warning you in advance. How many people wait for somebody to love them first before they love back? Oh, I see a hand. Okay. <laughs> Thank you for your honesty. <laughs> Isn't that true? Often, often we're waiting for somebody else to make the first move, and we're going to talk about that in a second, to take the first move before we actually move in faith. Romans 15, 7 says, you will bring God glory when you accept and welcome your, one another as partners, just as the anointed one has fully accepted you and received you as his partner. You bring God glory when you accept and welcome one another as partners. So, like, uh, by definition, sometimes people say I can't be a racist because I'm married to somebody that's vanilla. However, however, we all need to keep in mind that when we accept other people, I mean really accept them, that that brings God glory because it's a demonstration of his love. And so I would ask you to really evaluate whether or not you're accepting and welcoming one another as partners. No, I, I get we got to be wise sometimes. Now, there are parts of Houston where I don't go and go, hey, can I get a hug? I don't do that. I don't do that. <laughs> However, when I'm in my community, I do do that. And I now understand that it brings God glory. Number two, I will pray for others. 1 Timothy 2.1. Most of all, I'm writing to encourage you to pray with gratitude to God. Pray for all men with all forms of prayer and requests as you intercede with intense passion. Paul said to Timothy, his protege, pray for all men and women. So I want to ask you guys, do you have two lists? I'm not talking about a list of men and a list of women. I'm talking about, do you have a list of people that you pray for and a list of people that there's no way that you're going to pray for? <laughs> or you're praying, praying like the, the, the brothers of thunder said, lightning over there, Lord, please. <laughs> it's important that we pray for all men. Literally, when you are driving down the street, you have no idea what impact your prayers can make. It's just that you can't see them. Yeah. Remember, faith is the evidence of things hoped for and the substance of things not seen. Okay. Number three, I will speak the truth in love to others. Ephesians 4, 15, and 16. On your handout, it says Ephesians 4, 17. So Joey, or where is Joey? He was running around in the back there. Joey, uh, fix that for me. It's actually Ephesians 4, 15, not 17. So please mark that off on your sheet. Ra and this is what it says. 15 says, rather speaking the truth in love, we are to grow up in every way into him. Verse 25. So discard every form of dishonesty and lying so that you will be known as one who always speaks the truth, for we all belong to one another. There's not room for dishonesty, lying, deceitfulness in a body. It's, think about it this way. Uh, like, so, so we just got through about three, three and a half weeks where, where Debbie was in bed because something got in her body. Put her down, okay? Dishonesty, deceitfulness, Lack of integrity, when it gets in the body, it takes the body down. So there's no room for that in the body. So the other thing I want to talk about is, you know, we're all, I mean, I'm, 
I can get in the line every day. So I, can t I want to tell you my truth about you. Let's flip that around. How honest are we, when, are we with telling the truth about ourselves? Transparency is important because transparency leads to intimacy. And if you say the word intimacy slowly, it is in to me see. And in community, intimacy is important. We tell the truth, not only to others in love, but also about ourselves, okay? Number four, I will be kind and patient with others. Colossians 3, 12. You are always and dearly loved by God, so robe yourselves with virtues of God since you have been divinely chosen to be holy. Be merciful as you endeavor to understand others and be compassionate, showing kindness to, toward all. Let me stop right there. <laughs> Who does that say you're supposed to show kindness to? Who? Everybody, right? Be gentle and humble, unoffendable in your patience with others. Going back to last week, we talked about how offense derails so many relationships. Paul says, be gentle and humble, unoffendable in your patience with others. Now, I asked earlier whether or not you guys spent, uh, you had Thanksgiving around a table. Did anybody get on your last nerve? I'm going to take that as a yes. I'm going to take that as a yes. And in fact, and in fact, uh, have you evaluated why that happened? It says to be gentle and humble, unoffendable. I've learned when I'm around certain people to wear steel-toed boots. You know why? Because they're going to stomp on my toes. And, and in fact, they may not be able to help themselves. But if I know that, I can prepare myself and prepare to be unoffendable. Okay? Number five, I will bring joy to others. Proverbs 15:30. Eyes that focus on what is beautiful bring joy to the heart, and hearing a good report refreshes and strengthens the inner being. Um, the story I tell about this verse is called, it's called treasure hunting. You all know what treasure hunting is, right? Have you ever panned for gold? Okay. Well, I'm going to tell you a story that's not panning for gold. A little girl lives on a farm with her mom and dad. He raises horses and ponies. So she's used to seeing big piles of, what word should I, manure? Stuff, stinky stuff, stinky stuff everywhere. Uh, because that goes with horses and ponies. Well, they decide to move. And uh, dad decides he's going to put in a new front yard. And y'all, when you put in a new front yard, it's just good to put down a layer of stinky stuff. So she goes outside and she sees this big pile of stinky stuff and dives in and starts digging. Well, her dad comes home and he goes, what are you doing? And she says, I thought there might be a pony in there. Because they go together. Think about this. If you're spending most of your time looking for the bad stuff, you will find it. If you will spend your time looking for the beautiful thing in people, especially the people that you're closest to, you will find it. And then when you report out on seeing it, it will bring joy to their heart. It refreshes and strengthens the inner being of the other person. Number six, I will serve others. Galatians 5, 13. Beloved ones, God has called us to live a life of freedom in the Holy Spirit, but don't view this wonderful freedom as an opportunity to set up a base of operations in the natural realm. Freedom means that we become so completely free of self-indulgence, that self-centeredness, that we become servants of one another, expressing love in all we do. Mark 10, 45 says, Jesus, this is Jesus. Jesus said, I came not to be served, but to serve. If it's good for Jesus, it's good for us. Serving is an expression of love in community. Amen? Amen. 
All right. How many of you serve people on Thursday? Did they enjoy it? Oh, amen. Debbie makes a pecan pie. I'm not going to tell you everything she puts in it, but let me tell you. She served me. <laughs> Hallelujah. Number seven, I will comfort others. Second Corinthians 1, 3, and 4, all praises belong to the, to the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, for he is the Father of tender mercy and the God of endless comfort. He always comes alongside to comfort us in every suffering so that we can come alongside those who are, are, in, are in any painful trial. We can bring them the same comfort that God has poured out on us. Uh, God does not like to waste pain and difficulty and tragedy. He wants to actually take that. He wants to comfort it, and he wants us to share that with others. And in fact, because God is, the Bible says that God's in heaven, sitting on his throne. Jesus is sitting next to him. Yes, the Holy Spirit is here in the earth, and he uses us to comfort and so if you've ever been comforted, don't keep that to yourself. Don't keep that to yourself. It's important for other people to know that their community, their family is going to comfort them. Number eight, I will forgive others. Luke 17, four. No matter how many times in one day your brother sins against you or your sister sins against you, if you happen to have a sister, and says, I'm sorry, I'm changing, forgive me. You need to forgive him each and every time. Now, this is the story where the disciples are talking about, you know, somebody's messed up and the disciples say, well, Jesus, should I, just, should I forgive him seven times? You know, he didn't say anything. Is it seven times seven? It got to seven times 70. This is the only place in scripture where it's recorded where his disciples said, Jesus, help us increase our faith. It takes a lot of faith to forgive certain things. It doesn't mean that you come back into relationship or fellowship with somebody that's done something awful. I'm not saying that at all. But forgiveness is not for them. It's for us. Jimmy Evans says that forgiving someone, not forgiving someone is like drinking poison and expecting the other person to die. That's how nasty unforgiveness is. We need to forgive each and every time. Number nine, I will be generous with my time, my talent, and my treasures with others. Give generously, and generous gifts will be given back to you, shaken down to make room for more. Abundant gifts will pour out upon you with such an overflowing measure that it will run over the top. Your measurement of generosity becomes the measurement of your return. Now, I said time, treasure, and talent. Because some people have time and no talent. Some people have talent and no treasure. Some people have treasure and no time. So the question is, will you evaluate your life and see if you can become generous or be more generous with either your time, your treasure, or your talent? This is one of those one another's where you have to trust God that he's going to bring about a harvest because it says it's a measure of your generosity. You're going to get this back. It may not come back in the way that you handed it out, but trust me, that's what God wants to do. And finally, number 10, I will honor others. Romans 12, 10. Be devoted to tenderly following, excuse me, be devoted to tenderly loving your fellow believers as members of one family. Try to outdo yourselves in respect and honor of one another. Listen to that. Try to outdo yourself when it comes to respect and honor. Now I know that uh, there's something in our culture that says, well, I would respect him if he would be respectable. Okay. That's not what the Bible says. And in fact, what we need to do is maybe respect and honor above where somebody is because that's encouraging outdo each other in terms of respect and honor so the word quest is in this month's series title the word quest also implies 
there is a journey. And sometimes quests or journeys can be challenging and maybe even downright difficult. And usually it does not happen overnight. This quest for community takes time and follow through on the I wills. So let's never, never underestimate our need for the Holy Spirit to help us make this journey. And as Pastor Randy says, be willing to start right where you are and pursue getting a little better. Practically, this means that regardless of where you are in one of these areas. So let me ask you this. Is anybody in here a 10 at any of these things that we've talked about? Now, I'm going to make a, I'm going to make a uh, stipulation. I'm also going to say that there's nobody in this room that's a zero at everything. So everybody is somewhere between a zero and a 10 on all of these things. So I want to touch on another dynamic before we get to the last bit of participation about this. Okay, and here's the dynamic. Who goes first? Who goes first? Me or the other person? Here's our pattern from God. He loved, so he initiated action. God loved, so he gave, motivated by that love. The proof of that is in Romans 5.8. And it says, and it was while we were yet sinners that Jesus died for us. I want you to keep in mind the big point from last week's sermon about how easy it is to get offended with people, especially if they appear to be rejecting what we believe is goodwill. So have you ever tried to do something nice for somebody and it blew up in your face? Show of hands. Did you get offended? Okay. Yes. <laughs> I hear. Me too. Okay, now it's participation time. I mentioned earlier that I use the OA, OIA Bible study method. O for observation. What did it say? I, interpretation. What does it mean? A for application. Now, how should I change? So here's our assignment. I'm going to read the values again. And as you get a little nudge or a big nudge from the Holy Spirit, and as I said before, not from the person beside you. I want you to pick one that you sense you need to practice more. Jesus said, if we would build our house, in this example, our community on the rock, then when, not if the storms come, our community will stand and not fall. Clearly, new storms, different kind of storms, crazy storms, are brewing up in our society on a much more regular basis, and Jesus wants us to be able to stand. How important is it that the community of God stand? We're the hope of the world. Without us and what God has put in us, this is what he said. The way that the world's going to know that you're a disciple you're part of the community of believers, is the way that you love one another. So here's what we're going to do. We're going to ask the Holy Spirit, I'm going to pray, and we're going to ask the Holy Spirit to point something out. And again, I want you to really, uh, this is not about responding to the expectations of, so for me, for instance, for instance, um, because Mar Debbie and I have been married for 31 years, I already know I got a list of improvement areas, <laughs> okay? If you've been together with somebody for any amount of time, somebody else knows what your list of improvement areas are. And I'm sure that it's important to address that. What I'd like you to do today as I pray is to let the Holy Spirit put his finger on something that he wants to improve in you. Amen? Make sense? So is everybody prepared to do that? I'm going to pray, and then I'm going to start reading off the values. And as you hear the one that the Holy Spirit warms up, I want you to stand up, okay? Father, in Jesus' name, you're the one that sent the Holy Spirit. You said that the Holy Spirit would be our friend, our comforter, our guide, that he would lead us into all the truth. He would be our advocate. 
most of all, he would enable us. And as we saw after Pentecost, when the Holy Spirit was poured out in that upper room, 120 people started loving on each other, and it made such an impact that they were adding hundreds and thousands of people to that community because of the way that they demonstrated their love for one another. Father, what we're asking this morning is that your precious Holy Spirit would help each one of us identify a value that you want us to work on. And we thank you in advance that you're going to do that. And we give you all the praise for the work that the Holy Spirit is going to do in this room right now. Amen. So, value number one, I will love and accept others. I will pray for others. I will speak the truth and love to others, and I will be truthful about myself. I will be kind and patient with others. I will bring joy to others. I will serve others. I will comfort others. I will forgive others. I will be generous with others. I will honor others. Now, I'd like to call the prayer teams forward. If the prayer teams, please come forward. We're getting ready to close out the service. And as I started, it's going to be important that you let somebody know what the Holy Spirit said to you. So everybody that's wondering, has God ever talked to you? Maybe it wasn't an audible voice but you did get a nudge. That was God. That's what he sounds like. He's not loud and crazy. He's quiet and gentle. And so Pastor York, if I could have you come up and close out the, the, the day, that'd be great. Come on, it's a good pastor, raise your hand. That was a good word. You know, to apply what he just taught, I'm going to outdo myself in honoring. Uh, how many of you know Pastor Reggie saves marriages in this church? This guy is amazing. Um, I really appreciate him. Helps me so much with me and my wife as well. So, you know, he's just an amazing, amazing man of God. Um, I, I don't have the grace to counsel like you do, but you're amazing. Amazing. Um, and I really appreciate this series personally because I, I just realized how hard like naturally for us to build a good community. Like we need to be taught, you know, to, to do, to live biblically in a community. And um, so I really, really appreciate this series. Um, for these men and women of God right here who stood up here, um, I, I just want to say this. Being part of the community implies that there's a recognition that I cannot do this by myself. And some of y'all might not be ready yet to ask for help, but you can come up and ask for prayer. And, and I just felt so strongly as I was sitting down here that this might be a word for some of you in this room. Some of you might be at a place where you just can't do it by yourself anymore. And you have to at least admit that. At the very least, come up for these amazing men and women. They're going to hear the Lord. They're going to pray for you. We're going to contend for you for a breakthrough. But do not... Leave if you need prayer. And honestly, if you got to wait, like just wait. It might be easier for you to leave with all the cars anyways. So, um, so yeah, just receive, you know. We're here for you. And if that's really hard for you, there's another option. Here on the Connect card, uh, we, you can write down your prayer request. And the staff here at the Crossing Church will pray for you because that's what we do. 
Amen. And if you're here for the first time, this is the perfect card for you too. We love to know who you are. We love to connect you to part of this community. This is my favorite church. Um, not just because I work here. I mean, I work here because I, I love it here. And, and this is just an amazing, amazing place. We want to know who you are. Uh, so once you fill out the card, you can turn this card into the front desk over there. And we will give you a gift if it's your first time. Um, and if you need prayer, again, turn it into the front desk. We, we will contend for your breakthrough. That's what we do here as a family. And lastly, to continue our posture of worship, um, it's time for our tithe and offering. And just, you know, you can give uh, through the instruction on the screen behind me, or there's an envelope on your seat back pocket, which you can turn into the, the white box on your way out. Um, your giving helps build this community. That's just the truth. Um, but I, I also want to say this. The Bible says the Lord loves a cheerful giver. And we don't give out of compulsion. We give out of the love in your heart. Amen. And um, yeah, that's all I want to say on that. I'm going to pray as we close it out. All right. So, Lord, we thank you so much, God. I just pray for everyone in this room that will find healing in community. I pray for the Crossing Church that, Lord, your Holy Spirit would just move and that you solidify oh, just your power in this community. I pray for healing and breakthrough in the name of Jesus for everyone in this room. And those who need shift, to things to shift, God, I pray. I contend for them right now that you shift for them. I pray for everyone in this room, Lord, that they will have a God-filled week full of your blessing, full of your favor. And I'm going to read this over you in Numbers 624. Let the Lord bless you and keep you. Let the Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. And the Lord will lift up his face upon you and give you all peace. Amen. God bless y'all. Have an amazing week. We'll see you next time.